Hello, and welcome back to Battle Plan, a podcast focused on spiritual warfare. I'm Steve Hemphill, and Battle Plan is an ongoing discussion of how we put our faith into action by practicing prayer plus action. Uh, the website is active-faith.org. My email is stevehemphill1 at me.com. I would love to hear from you. In our last episode, we talked more about symbols. We asked the question, does a rabbit's foot bring good luck? And the biblical answer was no. Today, we're going to discuss another symbol and uh, common thing in our society today is uh, tarot cards, uh, T-A-R-O-T. I guess I'm pronouncing that right. Do tarot cards tell the future? Again, let's take a peek at Wikipedia for the answer the world would give to this question. Here's what it says. The tarot is a pack of playing cards used from at least the mid-15th century in various parts of Europe to play games. In the late 18th century, some tarot decks began to be used for divination via the tarot card reading and fortune telling leading to custom decks developed for such occultic purposes. Among English-speaking countries, uh, tarot cards are used primarily for novelty and divinatory purposes, usually uh, using specifically designed packs. Some who use tarot for fortune-telling believe that the cards have esoteric links to ancient Egypt, Iran, the Kabbalah, Indian Tandra, or the Qing, though scholarly research has demonstrated that tarot cards were invented in northern Italy, northern Italy in the 15th century and confirmed that there is no historical evidence of the usage of tarot for divination until the late 18th century. Again, notice the terminology used here, divination, fortune-telling, occultic usages. Now let's turn to scripture for some answers. Does the Bible even discuss this idea? Yes. In fact, beginning in Genesis chapter 44, verses 4 and 5 in the NLT says, uh, but when they had gone only a short distance and were barely out of the city, Joseph said to the palace manager, chase after them and stop them. When you catch up with them, ask them, why have you repaid my kindness with such evil? Why have you stolen my master's silver cup, which he uses to predict the future. What a wicked thing you've done. Now, Joseph's master was a Pharaoh, and he was not a follower of Jehovah God, and he used a silver cup to predict the future. Isn't that interesting? So right here in the beginning of the Bible, we see this idea being portrayed. Do you realize that God knows our future? Deuteronomy 4, verse 30, NLT says, in the distant future, when you are suffering all these things, you will finally return to the Lord your God and listen to what he tells you. He knew the future of the nation of Israel. Joshua 13, 22, NLT says the Israelites had also killed Balaam, son of Beor, who used magic to tell the future. Here's another reference to using magic or an item to predict the future, fortune telling. Now, Psalm 139, basically the whole chapter discusses God's ability to know the future in extreme detail personally in your life. Um, read the whole chapter when you have a moment, but in the first six verses in the New Century Version, it says, Lord, you have examined me and you know all about me. You know when I sit down and when I get up. You know my thoughts before I think them. You know where I go and where I lie down. You know everything I do. Lord, even before I say a word, you already know it. You are all around me in front and in back and have put your hand on me. Your knowledge is amazing to me. It is more than I can understand. In the New Living Translation version, verse 15 and 16 of that same chapter, Psalm 139, it says, you watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb, you saw me before I was born. Notice he was a me before he I was born. That flies in the face of abortion, just gets rid of tissue. It doesn't get rid of a living being. Here it was a me before he was born. And then it goes on in verse 16 to say, every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day 
had passed. You know, you can't discuss uh, the, the future uh, without a biblical perspective on prophecy. Only the true God, the living and true God, the one true God can predict the future with prophecies and be right 100% of the time. See, that, that's why about a third of the scripture is prophecy. It's prophetic. You know, in, in uh, the, the prophecies pertaining to the coming of Jesus, there's basically two big sets of prophecies in the Bible. First coming prophecies about Jesus coming once as a suffering servant and dying for us. And then the second coming series of prophecies. And, and, and this is how we prove God created everything. Jesus is his son, because all these first coming prophecies were literal hands and feet pierced, born of a virgin, betrayed by a friend, 30 pieces of silver, buried in a rich man's grave, not a bone broken, rise in three days. They're all literal. Now, that doesn't mean there's not symbols in there. Led as a lamb to slaughter is definitely a symbol, and yet he was literally slaughtered. His real blood ran out on the real sand on Calvary in Israel. That's how we prove God is the creator and orchestrator of the scriptures, and Jesus is his son. Isaiah 42, 8 and 9, Amplified says, I'm the Lord. That is my name. My glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved idols. Indeed, the former things have come to pass. Now I declare new things. Before they spring forth, I proclaim them to you. See, God knows the future. Prophecy proves God and Jesus are his son. Um, Revelation 19, 9 and 10 NLT says, and the angel said to me, write down, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the lamb. And he added, these are the true words that come from God. Then I fell down at his feet to worship him. But he said, no, don't worship me. I'm a servant of God, just like you and your brothers and sisters who testify about their faith in Jesus. Worship only God for, and here's the key, for the essence of prophecy is to give a clear witness for Jesus. Prophecy is in the Bible to prove who Jesus is. That's why it's there. Second Peter 1, 19 to 21, New Century Version says, this makes us more sure about the message the prophets gave. It's good for you to follow closely what they said, what the prophets said, as you would follow a light shining in a dark place until the day begins and a morning star rises in your hearts. Most of all, you must understand this. No prophecy in the scriptures ever comes from the prophet's own interpretation. No prophecy ever came from what a person wanted to say, but the people led by the Holy Spirit spoke words from God. You see, prophecies are words from God. Do not ignore or disregard them as meaningless to even our generation. Do not consult a medium or a spiritist, and do not seek knowledge about the future from any human beings around you. Seek only God. He's the only one who knows the future in detail in your life. So in light of today's thoughts, let me suggest that part of your personal battle plan might be to get rid of any tarot cards you might have in your home. I know Christians who have tarot cards in their home. Encourage others to do the same, to get rid of them. Don't seek knowledge of the unseen or knowledge of the future from any kind of cards. And don't play around with I this idea. Don't say, oh, it's just harmless fun. It is not. Even if someone tells you it worked for them, don't believe them. Its origin is not from scripture, but it's from God's unseen enemies. Maybe you could pray about it like this. Lord, forgive me, and also please forgive all my ancestors from any connection with spiritists, mediums, or tarot card readers. I repent for any evil connections that I have made or that any in my lineage have ever made and ask you to forgive us and end any and all connections to this evil practice of anyone in my past or anyone in my family's past. In Jesus' name, amen. See you next time on Battle Plan, where we're going to talk about a free 2020 online seminar, interactive live seminar on spiritual warfare. We'll start it in February. I'll give you the details in the next episode. Let me just remind you to keep praying because prayer works. God loves you and I love you. Have a great day.